I wasn't late. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Hello, I've set up a lovely little barbecue for us today. <laughs> we can have some delicious um, meats or uh, uh, skewers or here, let me just toss a couple things on the barbie, you know? Just like toss, toss some delicious food on, on the barbie. <laughs> <laughs> we can cook it all up. Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> we chill it and we grill it. I don't know how to reset this actually. Now that I'm uh now that I'm thinking about it. Um I guess I just undo it all. <laughs> just, oh. Oh that turns my light off too. Weird. What else is there? I can clear the table. No food. <laughs> or I can I can also turn off the lights. <laughs> I got this cool background. Uh it was from um I don't actually have the link on hand. Hold on, let me grab it really quickly toss it in chat for you guys just in case you want to play around with this sort of stuff and then we'll get right into it you know right into the new no i'm not i don't want to be drama alert <laughs> but hello guys how are you doing today how is life how are the kids today is going to be another of my little talks about stuff um, I've seen the whole say so versus lewd debate all over Twitter, not only just recently, but like in general for pretty much the entire time I've been a VTuber. <laughs> so here's a, uh, here's the link for the background. If you guys are curious about it, if you want to check it out or anything like that, enjoy it. I'm waiting. waiting for my chance to bully. No! Waiting for my chance to bully. No! Don't bully me! No! Alright, so... Let's start out with something pretty simple. I just want to give a couple of quick disclaimers on stuff. <laughs> The first one is that the thumbnail is incorrect. Honey isn't lewd and I'm not say so. But I didn't want to use other people's images. I didn't want to like go and find some other VTuber out there and like just shove them onto my thumbnail and use them as like clickbait or something. So I asked Honey if it was okay if I used her as clickbait. 
And then I tossed myself on because I look, I look innocent. <laughs> so it's all fine. I know that we are not either say so or lose. I don't think either of us or are either of those things. <laughs> the irony was not lost. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, so neither of us are either of those, but I didn't want to use another VTuber's picture and like maybe cause hurt feelings or like, you know, make it into a weird thing, you know? Secondly, right off the bat, I just want to say Anyone is valid for doing any kind of content that they want to. One is not better than the other. Uh, you can do lewd stuff if you want to. You can do say so stuff if you want to, whatever. And finally, <laughs> let me just get into the, the kind of elephant in the room. Say so is a bad term. N not because like, <laughs> it's stupid. It's used in the English speaking VTuber spaces because of a Nyaner's parody song with her being like, hello, I am Say-So, even though she's being a total freaking gremlin. <laughs> Technically, in that context, Say-So was supposed to be pure and innocent and wholesome and, and like, you know, <laughs> not gremlin. But it was like popularized in English speaking spaces by Nanners making a parody song about it and she is not any of those things. So it's kind of been used ironically and seriously simultaneously the entire time in the community. <laughs> so I'll be using family friendly to describe the opposite of lewd tubers uh, for the rest of this video. <laughs> I, I grabbed the term say so to clickbait people, but technically speaking, we're talking about family friendly. Family friendly versus lewd. Um, the other problem with using say so as opposed to family friendly is that there's a lot of fighting about what say so actually means. Uh, so like some lewd tubers will be like, I could be say so too. Which like, it depends on which definition of the word you're trying to use, because technically... Oh, Raylis! <laughs> hello! Welcome in! Hello, 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 hello. What's up? The Fisher bait us. <laughs> hello, guys! <laughs> How you doing? I'm going to do a lewd versus say-so talk. I was just talking about the fact, though, that say-so is kind of a confusing term. Um, yeah, Mampaka said say-so means clean, as in I cleaned the kitchen in actual Japanese usage, doesn't it? It kind of does. It also has another connotation, uh, which is kind of more for, like, a traditional Japanese woman, like a Yamato Nadeshiko style woman. Um, yeah, we're having a nice summer barbecue as we talk about it. Clean versus dirty. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But say so is kind of a confusing term because there are a lot of lewd tubers who also say, I'm say so because technically they're trying to use it in a way that means wholesome rather than pure and, and clean and not dirty. <laughs> so I'll be using this as family friendly versus lewd for basically the rest of the stream. We're talking about family friendly versus lewd VTubers. <laughs> Dirty versus clean is butt. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a fun stream. Yeah. So we're talking family friendly versus lewd. The two extremes of uh, basically like the top and bottom, <laughs> uh, not really top and bottom, the left and right sides of VTubing. The cleaner sort of no nude, no lewd jokes sort of side versus the... <laughs> <laughs> Top and bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. Um, versus the the side that's more dirty, who who does like more lewd pictures, who does more lewd content, makes like cum jokes, stuff like that. Right? Makes more sense for people who don't really know Japanese slash B2 language too. Yes. So we're talking about family friendly versus lewd stuff. I appreciate creators categories slash separate their family friendly and NSFW content accordingly. Yeah, it would be nice if they did that more often, especially on Twitter. 
there's a lot of people who just don't really like to like you know spoiler tags that that's another talk we'll get we'll get to that later <laughs> so say so versus lewd vtubing family friendly versus lewd vtubing all of that stuff has been a um a topic that comes up every few months for the last basically like two years at minimum if not more than that in the vtuber community especially on twitter mostly on twitter <laughs> Me getting on Twitter. I'm gonna see VTubers me actually on Twitter. Booba. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. So it's kind of, it's a topic that has risen its head up again more recently. Um, but there are kind of like four different uh, reasons that I think that it pops up most commonly. So the first one, uh, the most recent one that happened was people thinking that, that they have to be lewd to succeed as a VTuber because there's a lot of clipping channels out there and the only things that they'll clip are people saying really sus things, saying really lewd things. Um, <laughs> cozy talking me watching how cool her model is, thanks. <laughs> bull, what bull? Yeah, it, so people think that they have to be lewd to succeed in the community and uh, I kind of get that in a way. We could talk about things in more detail in a minute, but... Sorry, I had to clear my throat a little bit. So that's one reason. Second reason, people saying that lewd VTubers can be say-so, and it makes no sense to separate the two. So people saying lewd VTubers can be say-so is kind of one of those things which is confusing about the word say-so. Uh, they mean wholesome. They mean that lewd VTubers can be wholesome, and that is true. They can be wholesome. They can be wholesome and lewd at the same time. But that does not mean that they are being family-friendly and lewd at the same time, because that is kind of impossible. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really work, right? So that's the second reason. Third reason, people arguing and infighting between which is more valid in the content sphere, like which which side kind of works better in content creation. Uh, stuff like, if you go on YouTube, you can't be lewd at all because you can't say all, all of this, that, and the other, or if you're on Twitch, you should know better You that you would have gotten banned if you're wearing like a bikini or something because blah 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 blah, you know? Content creation stuff, advertiser-friendly stuff, that's the reason it comes up. And the final reason that it comes up is say-so VTubers being told that they have it easy because they don't get harassed and pushed off of platforms on the regular. People being like, ah yeah, you're family-friendly, so you don't have to worry about being pushed off of a platform and people like coming to you and being like disgusting, ah, you're a sex worker, etc, etc, etc. So those are the four reasons why people kind of fight about being family friendly versus lewd all the time. <laughs> and it just kind of goes into a loop. Uh, I think that it pops up every couple months and it just keeps going constantly. Just <laughs> always freaking happens. I don't know why. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and got really confused when I ended up here. <laughs> Hello, welcome! <laughs> yeah, sex sells. That is, that is something that people uh, fight about with it a lot. So... <laughs> the loop returns, yeah. Look at all this food! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Here, let me put some things on the barbie for us, you know? Start up some... Mm, let me just start some thin things grilling, you know? Just talk... Oh, that prawns. We'll get a couple of skewers on here. Mm, those clams. Some mushrooms on there. Mm mm mm. Tasty. <laughs> Just go ahead and grill all those things up, right? Mmm. <laughs> Same cyclic discussions in the community. No, never. Every freaking. Every freaking week, a new discussion pops up that's just another repeat of something that we talked about like last week or whatever. Man. Every time. So, let me talk about first uh, what the kind of, um, th there's something that's up with, with family friendly versus lewd stuff. The thing is that most VTubers fall in between, so there's not really a term for it. And we were kind of talking about this on my Twitter recently. There's 
there's not really a way to define somebody who is doing content that maybe has some swearing, has some, like, a lewd joke every now and then, stuff like that, but is still not, like, I'm not showing you my boobies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I will not be showing you my boobies, <laughs> sussy tuber. But it's not, like, not necessarily sussy. Some people cuss, but they don't do lewd jokes, you know? It, it's like a, it's a weird spectrum between being completely family-friendly and clean and not saying anything weird or, like, PG-13 content versus, uh, PG-18 plus sort of stuff. <laughs> you don't need dirty VTubers, you have anime. True. I used to try to follow English VTuber threads on Twitter, but it's always the same argument. Yeah, it is! Always. Pretty much every time. Peggy16. Yeah, so the way that I define my content is usually saying that I have a 16 plus age rating. So technically, if you are under the age of 16, you probably should not be watching me because I do make some sex jokes and I do cuss a bit, right? I am not PG-13. I used to be, though. I tried to do family-friendly content when I first started out. I tried to um, never swear, to never make any dirty jokes, to never do anything like that, but I just didn't like the space that, that was creating for me in my community with a younger crowd, um, and I wanted to be more myself and make some of my own like silly, sussy jokes sometimes, right? <laughs> but you showed us your boobly eyes. I showed you my boobily eyes, please respond. If you're using movie ratings, the most VTubers are PG-13 or NC-17. A few are R, but that's the majority. And there's a handful of G and a handful of XXX. It's all valid. Yeah, it is all valid. It is, it is. <laughs> also, hello, Rainbow. But, yeah, so there's, there's kind of like this spectrum between lewd and family-friendly. And... A lot of people fall in between the spectrum, but it seems like the VTuber community is trying to push for only the two categories, either family friendly or lewd. And if you don't fall in, into one of those two categories, it's really hard for people to be able to tell what your content is, it seems like. Nobody knows how to actually search up content that, that fits within what they're looking for. <laughs> it feels like if you are not completely family friendly or completely lewd you're just gonna end up with weird people who are like this isn't fa like i got a comment on one of my videos recently i think it was uh on on one of the honey live td rigging streams and they were like that picture on the thumbnail isn't child friendly i was like what <laughs> no of course not neither is my channel really <laughs> i mean maybe if you're like 16 plus or something <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so people try and put everybody kind of into a box of either being, um, like, family-friendly or being lewd. That said, there's also another thing that people use to try and define content ratings, which is safe for work. Uh, safe for work stuff generally tends to refer to stuff that you can visually watch while you're at work and nobody is gonna, like, think you're being weird or anything like that, right? So if you're looking at naked chicks at work that is not safe for work but if you are just watching like like I generally consider my streams to be safe for work because I might make one or two uh sussy jokes now and then but most of the time that's not my content style right and I don't show you anything that is ever like you know dirty <laughs> honestly just be yourself don't create because you want others to like it create because you like it exactly yeah true I think the main problem is that family friendly is a very specific box and anything outside of it goes into the vague territory of lewd. Yeah, it's like a vague territory. Really? My coworkers don't mind those pics? I mean, some people's works are different, right? But like, generally safe for work is considered like stuff that you wouldn't necessarily- like stuff that you can show your coworkers and your boss and they're not really gonna think that you're being a degenerate. <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel like when it comes to the in-between content, as we put it, that's the majority of streamers and content creators, VTuber or otherwise. Yeah, I agree. But with VTubers, it seems like people are trying to put everybody kind of into a, a weird box. 
of uh, being one side or the other, and then they just kind of have a war between them constantly. There's like a... a <laughs> Freaking! There's always like family-friendly versus lewd wars for no reason. Everybody can just make whatever the hell they want, but... Somebody will always pop up with a new freaking Twitter thread that's like, I really wish that there there were more family-friendly VTubers in the space because it's really disgusting how all of these people... <laughs> but who cares? Just don't watch them. Watch somebody else. Oh my god. <laughs> Twitter is just a cesspool. It's true. What you got grilling over there? It looks tasty. We got some prawns. We got some um, delicious scallops. We have some mushrooms. We got... We got a whole bunch of good things on here. I should probably take them off the, the grill, though. They're, um... They've been on there for a while, haven't they? Just pop everything off the grill again. <laughs> Hello, ghosty! Welcome in! Nah, you're not too late. You're good. I, I don't know how to remove that one. It's just stuck there, I feel like. <laughs> Let there be twi peace between the lewd and family-friendly. I agree. I feel like to a degree, the Oshi slash idol mentality is what's causing a lot of this argument amongst foes. Everything is valid, but what isn't is the weird forcefulness being so pervasive. Yeah, that is pretty much my theory on it too. I think that the weird divide between family-friendly kind of stuff and lewd stuff is based completely around the idol culture that VTubing kind of grew up in. Um, so it's kind of like this strange, like... Oh, well, if you're an idol, you can't be lewd sort of situation. Or, oh, um, I'm not an idol, I'm just a normal human, so I can do whatever the hell I want sort of situation. You know, it's like, it's very strange. I think the binary mentality is pervasive throughout American culture. You have to be one thing or the other, but most people don't see the in-between stages that most people reside in. True. I am, I'm camping. I'm going, I'm glamping. <laughs> I'm glamping. <laughs> I'm on a glamping trip. <laughs> idol culture kind of be a pain sometimes yeah it's a uh, it's not the best um personally speaking i think that anyone can do whatever the hell they want to if they want to be lewd then they can be lewd if they want to be family friendly they can be family friendly i personally tried being family friendly and it just did not work for me because it's just not the kind of community that i want to build and create but um you know, if somebody else wants to try and do that, try and create a safe space for people that are younger and uh, all of the, like, kids who might be in the community, perfectly fine. Completely on them, right? And same thing goes for people who want to be lewd. If they want to do, like, an OnlyFans thing, if they want to um, go and create, like, uh, like, hentai content or something like that, totally fine. They could do their own thing there, too. What did kind of bother me, though, um, when I tried to be a family-friendly creator, uh, I did- I interacted with a couple of looter VTubers, um, just like once or twice. I knew of them mostly on the outside. Um, I personally was trying to make sure that my Twitter feed never liked anything that was, uh, lewd never posted on anyone's posts that was a lewd tuber, anything like that, but, like, on the outside, uh, I had interactions with some people. And the one issue that I had was that people were saying that I was weird for trying to not do any collab content with somebody that was lewd. And it wasn't ever because, like, I thought that they were gross or, or weird or anything like that. It was mostly because if you collab with somebody, there's always a chance that someone in your community will look up the names of somebody that you are collabing with and try to like get to know them, try to get into their content, especially if you're linking them places. So it doesn't necessarily matter how nice and kind they are if, <laughs> if you have a 10 year old kid on your channel who knows that they're safe on your channel who then goes to look at their channel and immediately sees porn. <laughs> so I always tried to avoid that situation, but I was kind of called weird for doing it or, or told that I was wrong for doing it, uh, which is part of the reason why I just stopped caring about it all and was just like, yeah, I'm around 16 plus-ish. I don't want to be family friendly anymore. That was 
Part of the whole debate. I just didn't want to be part of the fight anymore. Yeah, crossover for viewerships. What kind of 10 year old uses Twitter? Well, it wasn't necessarily Twitter, right? Because I am a YouTube main, uh, if I had collabed with anybody who was on the looter side and like put their name out there for my community to see and stuff like that, um, there were really young people that were in my community. There was a 10 year old that was in my community for a long time. So I was always thinking about her or like some of the other kids that were in my community. And if they had seen that name, and if they had searched that name up on Google, they would have found, uh, porn. <laughs> Even if it, like, Google didn't fully filter everything, right? So, it, it was always kind of a problem with that sort of stuff. Um, what about posting a warning about who you're doing content with, that they are R-rated VTuber? Yeah! You could do a warning, but most kids aren't gonna care about the warnings, right? We need to make a law that bans kids off Twitter. There's literally a law that bans them off of pretty much every single site. They just don't care. <laughs> Is Dad Paka about to get on that grill? <laughs> I am father today. Kappa, what's that? Yeah, there's literally laws against trying to keep kids off of content that they should not see. Kids don't care. And I know that because I was one of the kids who did not care. <laughs> so it has to be something that is done by the adults to try and make sure that that content is safe for them to watch if you are trying to create content that is safe. Where are the parents when you need the most? That's what I always wondered. That kid that was 10 year old in my community, she was emailing me all the time. She was trying to get me into like, like Google circles or whatever. She was trying to FaceTime me. She was like 10 years old. I don't know where her parents were. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. I would love to know where the parents were. I know, poor kid. D let me just say, this is the only thing I will ever say about it. <laughs> that kid showed up in my chat once and she said, I'm a lolly VTuber because they looked like her. And yeah, there's, I... <laughs> yeah, I told her, oh, you shouldn't use that term because, um... Uh, but bad people use that term. Uh, you, it's it's not a good word. Not a good word. You you should be uh d just you can be a different kind of VTuber. And she was like, I'm a pirate VTuber. And I was like, perfect. That <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Kids are raised by TV parents. Don't exist between seven a.m. to five p.m. Kind of true. That situation, by the way, is another reason that I was like, I want out of family friendly. I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to babysit kids that are saying that stuff. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. Uh. <laughs> another reason why I won't let my kids use the internet until puberty. Yeah, I, well, see, the thing is, I was a kid on the internet early. I was I was around uh, eight to ten ish when I first got on the internet. Um, now my parents were uh, more into like they knew more about the internet than most parents did at the time. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mom Paka is like from a parental ex perspective, we knew exactly what Cozy was doing on online. Yeah, so my parents were way more knowledgeable about um, uh, content on the internet and like where I was going and what I was doing and stuff like that. Um, so I think I was safer than most would have been. But at the same time, I did seek out stuff that kids should not be looking at. <laughs> And I did see stuff that kids should not be looking at. So, you know, even though they were safer than some, I saw a lot of things that they probably had no clue I was looking for. 
Every kid seeks out that stuff. There's a certain level of expectation of that. Yeah, I, I think that's true. I think that's true. Oh, we knew. All right, fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so basically, the arguments going around don't allow for shades of gray. Is this that big of a deal? Since the next generation is basically an internet generation, it's the job of the parents. Yeah, it's... It's a weird thing that, that it goes around so often. Honestly, in my opinion, it shouldn't be such a big issue because honestly, anyone can make whatever content they feel like is appropriate for them and be fine with it. But it feels like there is a, a big divide in the community where people are like, you have to be one or the other. And as soon as you get shoved into that box, if you ever cross the line, even like towing the line a little bit in the opposite direction, people start judging you for it. They start thinking lo less of you for it, stuff like that. Or alternatively, people feel pressured into being in those other spaces. So for instance, this is something that I have also experienced and dealt with myself. I have felt uh, pressured to do lewd content before, like heavily pressured. Heavily pressured because because when you look at clips that are posted on YouTube all the time, uh, it feels like most of the clips from the big clipping channels are always like sex jokes, like oh somebody did a flip and you saw their underwear, or oh oh my gosh this person is talking about licking chat all the time, or you know like it feels like those are the only clips that are gaining any traction from the indie community, from the Hololive and and Niji Sanji communities they have much more interesting clips that are varied from all sorts of, of different things. But from the indie community, when, when well, I mean, now I'm corporate technically, but <laughs> from the smaller VTuber community, uh, it was always like, those were the main things that you saw. And so those were the main things that it felt like you had to do to get a bigger audience. Hi, Bessie. I don't think not letting your children use the internet at all is just denying the world. Yeah, I think I don't think anyone should should like not let their kids use the internet at all. I think that it's important for them to be able to experiment and grow alongside the internet. I think I am glad that I experimented and grew alongside the internet. But yeah, I think that <laughs> they at least need to if their kid is going and emailing like a, a creator and trying to get in FaceTimes with them. I think that that should probably be monitored a little bit. Yeah, I feel like the Clippers have made that more of an issue. It's ridiculous how the Clippers are so heavily focused on one type of content, thus creates that, uh, I can never say this word. I know that word. I just, I've, I can't ever say it. I've never been able to say it. <laughs> Pain. Uh, paradigm. Thank you. <laughs> paradigm. Ah. Uh. Pain. Pain, Paka. Wait, I think I misunderstood the thumbnails. It's not gonna be a collab at any point with Honey. No, it's not a collab with Honey. I, I asked Honey if I could use her picture. Uh, because I wanted to like show the contrast between um, lewd and 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 family friendly VTubers, um, and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't use pictures from people that I didn't know and like start putting them in boxes and stuff like that. So unfortunately, Honey isn't with me today, um, but I might have a chat with her sometime about some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a good picture, but uh, obviously, Honey is not lewd. I am not family friendly, so we're not either of these things. I just didn't want to use pictures that were like other people and put them in boxes. <laughs> Hold on, let me take a sip of water real quick. I can't believe Honey is dead. <laughs> I can't believe she's perished. How sad. Parasocialitis, a deadly disease sweeping online. Parasocialitis! It's true. Honestly true. Also, thank you, Zaytha! Yeah, trying to get in big with your favorite content creators is a uh, constant thing that people are having to deal with and try and teach their kids about recently. 
So it's it's kind of rough because, you know, they'll go and try and email these people and the parents probably mostly assume that they're going to be professional either way. So they don't really worry about it, but that's not necessarily the case, you know? <laughs> Cozy Chew's stream has mom, Paka, and pa papa, therefore alpaca family, therefore the stream is friendly. True, true. True. Technically, it's it's my family friendly. It's friendly to my family. <laughs> but you have no problem stuffing honey in a box? I asked. I asked. Also, I stuffed myself in a box, too. That's not even the box that I'm in. <laughs> I, I got permission before I put her in the thumbnail. But yeah, so I have felt the effects of that sort of thing before, too, where, like, I feel, like, pressured to do lewd content or make lewd jokes or stuff like that. If you've ever felt like I've kind of, like, pushed too many lewd jokes, um, just to kind of feel like I'm trying to fit in or something, like, if I'm in a collab or something like that and I start saying a lot of lewd jokes but otherwise I'm kind of quiet or something, it's, it's just kind of something that I do sometimes because I, I do feel a little bit uncomfortable or not really part of the, I don't know, part of the community, I guess. It's rough. There's so many people that, that do looter jokes. What kind of loot jokes? Example? Well, for instance, um, Koda is one of the looter people in Kawa. Uh, Koda is, he does a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of piss jokes, uh, a lot of, like, um, like, like, there was, there's a video that he posted of, of looking at a picture of a, girls, like, groping each other, and, uh, was like, oh, and he saved it and stuff like that, right? He's on the looter end. He even, he's even posted, like, some, some mild, spicy, like, lewd stuff. Saying that, <laughs> saying that you want people to piss on you is lewd. <laughs> He's also, he posted like a picture of uh, like his bulge hanging out a little bit on, on Twitter before, right? So he's like spicy, spicy kind of not full lewd. Um, but for instance, when we were playing Portal together, uh, there was a room that was completely filled with like a white Portal liquid and... We were both just giggling like five-year-olds and making cum jokes the entire time, right? I don't know if I would do that on my own. <laughs> I don't know if I would make that joke on my own. Or maybe I would make it once and then not really pay attention to it anymore. But the entire time we were in that level, I was making cum jokes. So... <laughs> It's definitely something that, like, sometimes I feel like I have to make some sort of jokes or, like, I feel like to fit in, it it helps to make more lewd jokes. <laughs> it, it's just kind of how it is sometimes. I, I'm trying not to do be like that. I'm trying to be more myself and, like, not try and make that stuff. But, you know, people enjoy it, too, so... A lot of your loot seems to be like riding the wave or just feel it, feeding off someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like riding the wave. Like if somebody else is loot, I'll... It's like when you when you have um, like a working mode versus like a friend mode or stuff like that. It's like a switch, basically. It's like a switch in my head. Like if I'm interacting with certain people, I should probably make more loot jokes because their audience thinks that stuff is funny and also it helps to... Um, drive a little bit more of friendship stuff. Cozy's lewd. Discussing ketchup versus mayo on Splatoon and sticking about what mayo looked like. Yes, but I didn't say the word come. I like, if you notice, <laughs> when I was in the, the portal stream with Coda, I was saying it constantly and I was being like, oh yeah, that is, that is freaking splooge. That is come. It is everywhere. Whereas when I was on my own and somebody asked about the ketchup versus mayo stuff, I was like, well, the ketchup looked like blood and the mayo looked like, um, you know, <laughs> and I didn't say anything, right? So that's my style of, of more lewd stuff. Matching someone's energy is all right, but feeling pressured is a very different story, which unfortunately doesn't sound like anyone in particular forces you, which is very good. No, nobody forces me. Nobody ever, like, tries to force me to, to be lewd or anything like that. But it does, it feels like a pressure to fit in 
to be closer to that style that style of content and that part of the community <laughs> Wait, oh, which, oh, did I say unfortunately? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I meant to say fortunately. <laughs> this is society's fault. It's, so, the thing is that I don't even know if it's anyone's fault in particular. I just think that, um, I just think that, you know, it's, it's kind of just a thing that people have to deal with sometimes with content creation. Sometimes something becomes more popular than something else and you feel pressured to fit in with that community and, and try and do that sort of stuff. In VTubing's case, it feels like a lot of clippers clip uh, lewd moments more often. So a lot of creators feel like they have to create some style of lewd content or like do an ahegao sort of picture on their thumbnail or stuff like that. Just to just to fit in and like try and get the the viewers to show up at their stuff too pilk is milk that is pink no it's milk mixed with pepsi if you know what pepsi is mana <laughs> gonna head out all right rainbow i hope you have a good day clippers are just going for views it's super lazy it's true what's an ahigal is that a type of cheese god i love nianer's parody <laughs> Puke milk? Go ugh, ugh. No. Yeah, I remember many years ago when I started secondary school, school, I felt so insecure and felt pressured to dress slash act a certain way. Yeah, it's basically that. It's, it's something that never really goes away, I think. I think no matter what community you're trying to fit into, you're always going to have those moments where you feel like you have to act a certain way to fit in best. And maybe that's not something that you would necessarily do on your own. But it's something that the community does a lot. And so you feel like, ah, if I do that, maybe they'll like me better sort of thing, you know? Clippers will clip whatever they want for views, really. At least for the major clippers. Yeah, true. They will, yeah. Sort of like you have to weigh what you value more. But in the end, it gets tiring to force something you really don't like doing. Yeah, and that's why I stopped being a family-friendly creator. Because I knew that it wasn't me. And I was just trying to do it to, I don't know. I don't really know why I decided to go family friendly. I think I just felt like that was the play at the time. I just felt like if I went family friendly, I I would have a better time of it because I don't, I can't do lewd. I'm, I'm incredibly ace. <laughs> I'm on, I'm like on the, the ace spectrum, I'm more gray ace, I'm not like full on like disgusted by the idea of sex or anything like that, but I'm more comfy and I'm less of a lewd person, so. Ah, uh, ace is asexual, so I, I don't really feel a, uh, I don't really feel sexual desire most of the time. I don't really feel like I want to do sexy things or anything like that. So. Because I am like that, it's just like, you know, I felt like I had to be more family friendly and uh, not like try and fit myself into the opposite box because I knew that I was going to fit into the lewd box. Do you like being an anime model? It looks so good and I like it. I like it. I like being an anime girl. <laughs> it makes me happy. A lot of VTubers feel like they have to be lewd in order to get an audience at all, sadly. Yeah, mm-hmm. The only true way to get an audience is to be yourself, IMO. It's not an audience if you're faking it. True! True, but that's something that you kind of have to learn along the, um, the road of content creation, I feel like. You start out feeling like you have to do things a certain way, almost always, I'm pretty sure. And then over time, you start to realize that the reason why people are watching content creators is for them and for for like being there for them and not for um fitting into a box you know i think the fear of family friendly versus lewd is that the gray area is the biggest audience and people can't seem to nail that and it's daunting that people are inclined to be there that's true it's hard to um it's hard to categorize the the gray area in between family friendly and lewd um it's it's kind of rough because it's like Okay, well, I am safe for work because I don't show anything lewd on screen, uh, but also I sometimes cuss and I might say something kind of sussy sometimes, right? But, like, that's a lot to say. 
and it's hard to describe. You could go by TV ratings, but honestly, in my opinion, TV ratings are a little bit outdated too, especially because online content creation is something that's so much more malleable than TV stuff. I feel like TV had way more guidelines, but online content creation just doesn't have that much. So it, it's hard to define, and then it's hard to tell people what you are and what you do. I'd only be surprised if there were lots of ace folk doing VTubing who fe pr feel pressured to do lewd stuff. It feels like that's the case. I think so too. I think there are a lot. I think there's also a lot of people who just don't want to admit that they're ace and they just want to try and like fit into whatever box they can with people. It's, it's rough, but I think it's important to just, yeah, like somebody said, just be yourself and do what you think you're most comfortable with. A lot of popular movies are PG and it shows that it can be super viable, but people want to polarize it into just two sides. Yeah, it's very strange how it works. The other thing is, people say that being a, a safer work, um, family-friendly VTuber isn't viable at all, but there's I think there's a lot of people who, who do have that sort of space. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it really works as an example because she only recently became a VTuber, but we can always just like mention Cookie Swirl C and the fact that she is probably the most family friendly VTuber that exists now. Um, and yet she has 17 million subscribers on YouTube. I know that she got there through other means first, but now she is a VTuber and it seems like her, her community is really enjoying her VTubing content. So, you know, you can easily be family friendly and still be successful. Um, and then also, <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing. She wasn't a VTuber before. You don't have to be a VTuber. You can... VTubing is just another style of, of content creation that people can push into eventually. You don't have to start as a VTuber. You can start as either a PNG VTuber or a no cam streamer or, or stuff like that, right? Like, VTubing is just one piece of the puzzle of content creation. So it's it's interesting that people seem to try and box things up so, so much in VTubing. Cause you're really just a content creator and you're just doing things, you know, that you feel like are cool <laughs> and creating content that you enjoy. Anyway, um, I feel like many kids now are aware of many things, and if they understand the jokes, they just assume that it's for their age rating, leading to kids watching 16 plus content without knowing. That's true. I feel like kids know a lot more than they used to about some things. <laughs> Which is, you know, for better or worse. I'm not gonna judge anybody, but... I personally am a little worried people wouldn't like my content because I'm pretty in the middle, but I don't particularly cater to below 18. Doesn't stop me from wanting to do what I want and love. Yeah, I just do what you, what you feel is best for yourself, honestly. As long as you're having fun, as long as you uh, seem passionate about your work, as long as you're doing stuff that you care about, people are always going to show up and they're always going to be there for you. It's going to take a while, most of the time. Like, that's the thing with content creation, right? Is that, like... It takes a long time. The most popular VTubers. I want you to really think about who is the most popular in the VTubing sphere. I want you to like really narrow down, not Hall Alive, not Niji Sanji, in like the indie VTuber sphere, or even like you can include V Shoujo too. Just think about those people. Most of those people have been creating content for over five years in other forms. Bao used to be Hikaru Station. Um, Takahata used to do stuff, including like face cam stuff, I'm pretty sure. Um, Booby, yeah, obviously, Booby. <laughs> Booby is a big one. Shy Lily, yeah, there's a lot of creators who used to do content creation in other forms. Nux, Nux, yep. They just, there's no real VTuber who started in the last year or something and has gotten to the top. If they have, they're either incredibly lucky or they've done a shit ton of practice. <laughs> 
and they've like studied their asses off to get there. Because there's so much behind content creation that you have to actually like put into it and like figure out, right? Anyway, that's a that's a different kind of topic. <laughs> OGV tubing is PNG tubing, yeah, right? What people don't understand is you don't magically get viewers just by VTuber streaming. You need a history of content elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, let me go back up and see if there was anything else that I missed up here. Um, returned from the depths of hell. I love pizza. <laughs> it's really hard to explain the magnet effect of communities. And maybe it helps to hold discussions about like people's journeys forming communities by expressing their genuine self. That's true. Yeah. I think that um, holding different discussions about things does help people to kind of like part the veil, I guess, and look behind the scenes on stuff and like really think about it. <laughs> God, praise slash curse the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah, creators that are solely a voice, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another argument I've been seeing a lot as well is the fact that VTubers are animated and seems to trip people into the whole This has to be for kids, you're honestly- you're obviously appealing to them I think that's an American mindset I think that is something that mostly is pinpointed to Americans Um, Americans have this strange thing with them, right? Uh, where They feel like anything that is animated, anything that is pastel colored, anything that is like cutesy in any form is something that is made for children, and if an adult is indulging in that kind of stuff, then it is weird and gross. Um, so the only animes that tend to get popular in a Western sphere are things that uh, have more rough animation, or look like more harsh, or like like JoJo is really popular in America. It's really popular. Also, the things like One Piece. Things that get really bloody and like have tons of fights in them and stuff. The shonen stuff, really. <laughs> but the cutesy stuff, like the idol animes, the idol animes are really unpopular in America. Annoying orange. <laughs> History of content elsewhere helps, but a long time of streaming just as a VTuber would have the same effect. You gotta have content library. Yeah, you just need practice. Honestly, it doesn't matter what type of content you're doing. It doesn't matter how you're doing content and stuff like that. You just need to practice more and like get out there and like learn different things about content creation and trying to improve over time. So the whole thing about VTuber booba flying around all over the place, even with say so VTubers has always been a question on my mind. Why do some people's busts seem to go, go up the bigger they become? Oh my God. <laughs> That's so true. Boobs get bigger, larger, larger VTuber, bigger boob. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, Skippity, I hope you have a good day. Why do people from the United States call themselves Americans when America is a continent? Ah, uh, it's just kind of a... The United States is longer, I think, is why. Yeah, the United States of America is the full name of the country. So we call ourselves Americans because it's the last word and it's the shortest word. So it's it's just kind of like a, like an easy thing for us. Some booba rigging tutorials that make me go, oh my Lord, why? <laughs> uh, so yeah, people think that, that you have to be sexier to, to succeed, but it's really not the case. You just have to have some practice and stuff. I'll admit, as someone about to finally get into content creation, I always wanted to, uh, I always wanted to, but having zero chance to do so for years, I'm super nervous. I know what I've wanted to do, just no clue to start. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of the tutorials and stuff out there though, to try and look on. To try and uh, figure out where a good starting point is, I think. I think my the one thing that um, I wanna focus on most with content creation is trying to become my own favorite streamer and content creator, right? Because if I'm trying to make the content that I think is most important, that I think that I would enjoy watching most, 
then that's going to show my passion most and it's going to create a group of people who also enjoy the same type of content as I do, which I think is important because that means that I'm, I'm still doing stuff that I'm passionate in and it's not just doing stuff, you know, for the hell of it to get views. <laughs> Hello, Andela. I'm waiting for a VTuber with Z cup. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see a VTuber with, um, boobs for head. Please? <laughs> uh, state Sitarians. Sorry, I'm, I am catching up on lots of things. Yeah, shorter, easier. Um. Da -da 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 -da. If you have a highly energetic and magnetic personality, you can attract a lot of viewers. True! Uh, there's something with content creation that is pretty obviously noticeable, um, which isn't necessarily being lewd or, or family-friendly stuff, but more being energetic and having really large reactions to things. People really like watching reactive streamers, um, like people who have like a ton of facial expression, who, who like move around a lot, who like freak out at the, the tiniest things like a creeper blew up on their face and they like toss their keyboard and they run away or something like that. Or, you know, really high energy, high reaction stuff, which is not something I can do, unfortunately, but you know, it's, it's fine. Lots of people tend to have a favorite VTuber as a comfort character, a character that makes all their stress and worries go away for a while. That's true, yeah. Yeah, some people will pick, like, one VTuber that's more of their, like, funny, um, comedy-style VTuber, and then they'll pick another one that's more of their comfy, like, I'm going to bed or something, so I'm gonna watch this person and relax for a while. Stuff like that. A non-VTuber example, I always liked best friends because they were genuine in their reaction and didn't panhandle like and subscribe. <laughs> Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Don't forget to buy my merch. Don't forget to go to my website. Don't forget to... I also don't like that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I should do some of it or I should put something on the screen that reminds people of stuff like that because some people don't even think about it. I've watched videos on like larger creators talking about it before and they're like, yeah, some people just don't think about it until it they hear it and they're like oh yeah I, I can like this video or oh yeah I guess I could subscribe right it's a reminder but it is kind of annoying when you hear it like for the millionth time in a row <laughs> like follow retweet share it with your grandma <laughs> yeah 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 so um so somebody had some questions about say so and lewd stuff so about family friendly and and lewd stuff um they had asked what classifies as say so and how far can you go before you reach the minimum baseline of the lewd zone i think that say so is weird and hard to define uh still i think that a lot of people think of it as just meaning wholesome and so they can they try to say that they're a lewd uh say so vtuber which just means that they're a wholesome lewd vtuber or stuff like that or some people actually have been using the the term lewdsome now instead um but then there's other people who are using it ironically because of nianer's parody of say so uh and then there's other people who are trying to use it more seriously as saying that they're family friendly so say so is incredibly hard to define <laughs> but um, I would say that people usually will be using it in, in the way of, um, somebody who is pure, uh, wholesome sort of stuff, you know? That's the most, mm, typical usage of it. I still think people should swap to using family-friendly constantly. Uh, family-friendly, safe for work, um... Maybe even, like, use TV ratings, like, I say PG-16 a lot of the time. I think those are easier to understand, too. And then, how far can you go before you reach the minimum baseline of the lewd zone? I think that the baseline- like, personally, I think the baseline of the actual full-on lewd zone 
is when you start to post like pictures that include um, like scandalous poses or that show off a little bit too much of like your your butt or your at your or assets in general. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of when I think that stuff starts getting more into lewd zone. Because I don't necessarily think that language is what does it. I feel like you can make some sex jokes and you can still be fine, right? Because, like, you're, you can be an adult and make sex jokes and you're not necessarily, like, a porn star, <laughs> right? So I think that it's when you start creating those, like, imagery sort of things, <laughs> assets, <laughs> and you start posting those out there, that's when you kind of hit the minimum baseline of lewd. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Melody or Vox Akuma? Yeah, Melody is, is perfect lewdsome, actually. Melody is, like, the baseline lewdsome, I would think. She's, like, uh, she's really cute, and, um, she acts super sweet, and she has a, like, she's so kind to people, it feels like. Uh, but she's, she is really lewd, and she has, like, an OnlyFans, and she does, I think she still does cam streams. So, you know, yeah, Melody's a good, good one. Uh, Vox is, uh, towing the line, I feel like. I don't think she, uh, uh, she, I don't think he, um, I don't think he does anything that's full-on lewd. I might be wrong. Not sure. Having an alt seems like a good way to keep audiences separated. Kind of, kind of not, because as long as you have the same name, if you're trying to hit both a PG-13 audience and also an 18 plus audience with the same name they're gonna be able to search your name and they will find porn so it's kind of rough some of Vox's asmr stuff is really a buy really i don't like listening to people whisper i like uh like tapping sounds and stuff for asmr i like i dislike mouth noises with asmr so i've never really watched yeah, Melody said her stuff was always 18 plus. Yeah, for sure. With the arguments of terms, the three categories to sum it up simply with like general, mature, and adult. Yeah, mature is a good way to say it. General audience, mature audience, adult audience. Yeah. I don't know why people don't use those more often. It's kind of weird. Tapping, breathing, close talking, and hush tones. Cute. VTuber SEO would take a long discussion. Yeah, it sure would. <laughs> uh, the second question that I had from somebody was, what are the pros of being a lewd VTuber when they're usually the ones being targeted for harassment? I feel like um, this is a good question because it does point out the fact that being a lewd tuber can cause a lot of people to come to you and like degrade you or feel entitled to things about your body or entitled to make certain kind of jokes with you or they could also show up and be like uh ew you're so gross for doing this kind of stuff or uh i think even things like tiktok tiktok like shadow bans you basically if they find out you're a sex worker so there's some it's like a really hostile environment to be so openly lewd sometimes so i think the pros to it um even though it's a hostile environment is that it makes you feel more comfortable uh with yourself you are accepting what you like um and you want to put out in the world you're doing a, a type of content that you you enjoy and are passionate with i would hope I, if you're not doing a type of content you're passionate with and you're doing lewd tubing stuff i would be worried <laughs> I would be concerned. I am not a lewd tuber. I'm not, I'm not family friendly and I'm not lewd. I'm like in between. I'm in the middle. The entitlement to knowing what you, what the, uh, oh God, there's just so much entitlement in general. Yeah, there's just, ah, uh, man. But anyway, yeah, so I would think that you are doing something that you're more, most comfortable with. You're doing something that you are interested in, that you want to put out into the world. Um, 
and you're, you're kind of being true to yourself. That's one of the pros. Uh, another pro is that, um, God, fucking, dude, can I just say, sex workers make a lot on the internet. Have you seen how much freaking Belle Delphine made on OnlyFans? Oh my god. Dude, she only shows up like once every couple months and she gets that bag. <laughs> Dude, they make freaking bank. <laughs> Ludinous sells. Yeah, it sure does. Like two, no, more than two million. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Belle Delphine OnlyFans. Uh, money, maybe? She posted like, was it her yearly? I think it was her yearly actually. Five mil in 2022. Yeah, that was it. That was the one. Fucking, she only showed up for like a second or two and then she. She got so much money. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I think you have to get famous first. Not necessarily. You could still make a lot of money off of doing like mild um, porn stuff. If you post, if you're like an artist, right? And you do like a couple of, of looter pictures on things. Um, oops, I turned the lights off. Yeah, we could have lights off for a while. Um, I feel like if you're like an artist, right? And you do a couple of lewd pieces, um, like tastefully lewd pieces at first, and then you kind of ease your audience into it, uh, you can eventually get to the point where you are posting a art piece that clearly has like more sexy things attached to it, but it's all like blurred out and stuff. You can be like, ah, you can find more lewd content on my OnlyFans. I think the same thing goes for VTubers in general. If they order a bunch of lewd art, uh, then they can they can post it kind of like that and be like, oh, you can find lewd stuff on my Patreon. Or, um, ah, I did a lewd ASMR video on my Patreon. It's always pushing to an external site, I think. Right? It is live 2D! Isn't it nice? Hold on, do I still have the link? Yeah! All right, there's a link to it if you would like to see it. Yeah, it's a live 2D background. It's so good. It's got a couple of different toggles for it, but I only have the lights out turned on right now, I think. You can also change the colors of it and stuff because it's live 2D. Anyway, um... However much Amaranth causes controversy, she's also a millionaire. I know, Amaranth is like... Dude, she's like the one of the richest streamers, I feel like. Why are the lights going out? Don't worry about it. It's fine. It'll be good. I am also using Schust. Yes, I'm using Schust. To diffuse the lighting a little bit. Yeah, suggestive to explicit art goes for bank. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's... I think that you can make a lot of money uh, if you like that content. And I think that if you want to get into that style of content it's uh you you would be doing something that makes you happy ideally at the end of the day i still think being lewd does help you get a lot of viewers i think so uh but i think it's kind of a shock factor factor thing um honestly i think that people tend to share and look at lewd clips more often because it's kind of like oh whoa she said that sort of thing it's kind of like, it's one of those like things where clickbait sells and like drama sells and stuff like that. Like bad things sell and then also shocking things sell. Um, and those are the things that people tend to look at the most. Um, so with like lewd content, if somebody says something that's extremely provocative and they're like, oh, I can't believe that they said that. That gets more views than just somebody being like, I like pie or something like I cats are cute <laughs> ah hello hee hee cat <laughs> I know Schust is a good name Amaranth doesn't even go full names anymore just uh full names just more suggestive on OnlyFans yeah she doesn't even go full nude she doesn't go full naked 
She's just like, yeah, uh, I'm just slightly suggestive on my OnlyFans. Please enjoy. <laughs> I only ask this in the context of the shock value and lewdness. How does this affect male or male presenting VTubers? Well, um, I think that there is an audience uh, for male VTubers to also be on the looter side. I think that that is really easily seen with Vox Akuma, especially. Um, but I think that for male VTubers, it's actually harder. For, for female VTubers, most of the time you can just go for, um, you could just go for a sexy swimsuit or something and that'll be enough to, you know, make somebody interested whereas for a male vtuber it's it's rough because i think that a lot of the times what people are really looking for is not only uh how your character looks but also how you sound i think um especially for like because usually you're targeting more of a, a female audience or like a, a gay audience and i think that a lot of the time they're looking for more, like, I don't know, intimate experiences than most. So they like good sounding voices more than they do lewd visuals. Where lewd visuals do work, but I think that it's it's less common. The <laughs> autocorrect went mad. <laughs> I got it. For male VTubers as male myself, I think they have the bro attitude it hooks me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a, a normal, not like sexy male VTuber. Yeah, I think the bro, uh, the bro attitude helps. Male audience tends to want physical looks and bubbly personality. Female audience wants, uh, tends to want safety, comfort, and being cared for. That's true. Yeah. Mm hmm. Personality, um, especially like a, a, a powerful style of character something someone who is trying to who is like on a, an upper echelon of power and is trying to take care of of subjects or something like that i think that's why vox works so well or like a, a fatherly figure or something like that i know an atis artist who uses her animations and physics more than her voice to gain an audience and she has hundreds of watchers each stream ah that's kind of cool so would we reasonably be able to say that the trend towards lewd clips exerting viral pressure comes from the internet's strange relationship with pornographic content, that there's tons of it mostly? Did you know? I saw a stream by Ludwig before, where he was looking up um, just different subjects to see how popular they were on Google Trends, and <laughs> he looked up like the most popular content creators in the entire world. And they could not, they were not even close to a drop in the bucket to porn. Just the word porn. Or like, looked up the most powerful people in the world. And they also were not even a drop in the bucket to porn. <laughs> the internet is for porn. <laughs> it's so true. It's honestly just. <laughs> so freaking true. <laughs> Horny. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... Well. <laughs> it's it's kind of just something that... Is internet-centric. Uh, most of the time. I think when you're, when you're doing other media. When you um, are trying to get into doing, like, commercials. Or you want to be involved with certain companies or stuff like that. You can't really say certain things or do certain things because they want their content to be targeted towards a specific sort of audience and you know for as popular as porn is it's not for everybody <laughs> i want to listen but i need to go all right too i hope you have a good day not news to me it's facts at this point yeah <laughs> oh yeah snuffy's voice is nice it's good Interestingly enough, the most googled word so far in, for 2022 is YouTube, not porn. Oh. Good job, YouTube. Hm. It's almost instinct to desire each other. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of instinct. It's human nature, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think that... I, f I feel like, you know, 
it's kind of a shock factor thing. It's also kind of just like a human nature thing of like intrigue and interest with the uh, with sexy kind of content. It's unfortunate though that there aren't that many really like family friendly content creators um, that are aligned with VTubing that are are super popular. I really wish that there were. I wish there were more examples that I could point towards. The only real example that I can point towards is like, here's Cookie Swirl C, but she wasn't a, a VTuber when she started. So she didn't grow as a VTuber. I think we're still growing the, the audience that is more um, family friendly. I think it takes a while to grow that audience. I think, um, I think we, we should probably like be hoping most for like the first full-on nintendo vtuber or something would probably be the most family friendly more empirical data must be gathered yeah it's only been a couple years of of the vtubing boom especially in like english speaking spaces that's just uh just how it is kind of right now yeah only my grandma goes to Google to search for YouTube. I type YouTube into the bar, but like I have it on my my recently vi visited sites, so I can just click that. Or like, I mean, I think I also have it on my homepage when I open a new window. <laughs> yeah, it's not an avenue that should be ignored. I think that people um, avoid family friendly content a lot. And I don't know if that's because they just don't want to deal with kids or like, I know that's kind of my reasoning. I just didn't want to. <laughs> Or if it's more just that it, it feels more complicated and it feels like it would be easier to just like exist. Kids are scary. Kids are scary. They're so spooky sometimes. I swear to God. They're also like assholes. <laughs> Fucking TikTok is a mess. Dude. <laughs> spiritual content. Oh, if you want spiritual content, have you heard of um, Prayers with Abby? Uh, if you're Christian, at least. Um, pray is it prayers with Abby or prayers for Abby? Prayers. Prayers with Abby? Is that it? Prayers, prayers, prayers from Abby. Prayers from Abby. Pray it was neither. It wasn't with or, or for. <laughs> uh, okay, here you go. I have her Twitter. She is a huge cutie. She is family friendly. She is a Christian VTuber. She does um, sermon, like she, she'll she have like, she'll host like actual prayer days on Sundays, I think. Um, and then she she does, does really family friendly content besides that. She, she preaches uh, really traditional like uh, Christian values and tries to befriend people from all walks of life. She, like, she'll even talk to, she's talked to lewd VTubers before, um, just in general. She, she tries to accept all people. She's, she's a real sweetie. I love Abby. What a cutie pie. <laughs> Kids on the internet be like, gun. <laughs> uh. <laughs> has she ever sweared in a stream? I don't think so. I don't think she ever has. Not that I know of, but I, I don't, uh, I'm not personally Christian, so I don't tend to watch a ton of her streams. I only watch them sometimes. I pop in occasionally. Not a super, like, um, uh, consistent watcher or anything. But yeah, she's a real sweetie. She's very cute. So if you'd like, that's the, that's the main one I know about, but she might know of more that are in the community. That's, she's like the biggest um, religious VTuber that I know of. Uh, there's also one on, on YouTube though, actually, that is, um, uh, I don't remember what her name is right now, but she ha she wears like um, uh, the headdress. Why can't I remember the name of it right now? Ha is it hijab? I think. Olivia Monroe is family friendly with chaotic energy. Oh, true! I didn't. I didn't even think about Olivia. I forgot that Olivia was family friendly. That's true. Hold on, I'll grab her Twitter too. Good job. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's a there's a VTuber on YouTube um, that I can't remember the name of right now. Unfortunately, she usually speaks in another language, so I I think I'm following her, but it's hard for me to type in her name most of the time. Um. But she also does, uh, 
uh, more, not really religious focused, but, you know, some religious content. I think she does, like, not really ser sermons or anything, but she, she does, she posts videos of her talking about certain religious things. I can't remember what her freaking name is, though, off the top of my head. I'm looking through my subs, but it's rough. Is shite a curse wood? I think so. I think in most spaces it would be. But, like, I don't think that... I, I feel like most people fall so far in between the, the like, list of... of if you're family friendly or lewd, you're just right in the middle, kind of. So most people aren't really gonna care if you just do like frick or or shite or stuff like that, as opposed to like full on harsher curse words. They're still gonna call you family friendly if you do that sort of stuff. <laughs> what does the dog say to the other dog having trouble? That's rough, buddy. Oh my gosh, please. Yeah, Feck, Feck is borderline too, yeah. They're like, they're, well, they're replacements in America, but I think in, in like England, aren't they more mainline curses? Don't they use those more commonly? When using Japanese bad words make me not family friendly. That's a, it's a weird situation, right? Because it feels like most of the curse words that people actually care about for family friendly content are English and they don't really care about anything else, right? It's strange. It's very weird. <laughs> Cause nobody really cares if somebody says like, like, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, uh, Kusoyaro or something. Nobody really gives a, a frick if you say that sort of stuff. Whereas I've just said frick instead of fuck. <laughs> it feel I don't know. It's it's strange. And also same thing with um with ad stuff. I feel like ad people don't really care either. They're just like eh, whatever. <laughs> Freak! I'm freaking it. <laughs> That's adorable. Damn and damn it. Um. Damn and damn it and damn it, but they're like spelled differently. <laughs> Used to be bad words societally, but now they're mainstream use in the US. They're not considered bad, just naughty. Really? I didn't even know that they weren't really considered bad anymore. I thought they still were. Huh. I can't find her. I've been I've been looking for her still on the side. Unfortunately, I seem to be incapable. I'm following so many people. <laughs> Gosh darn it! Ah, crud! <laughs> Ding dangly doodle! <laughs> Damn has been used in some kids' cartoons. That's true, actually. I forgot about that. I've seen a couple more recent ones that, that use Damn. Everybody knows what MF means. Shorten a 12-letter word to a 2-letter word easily. True! Yeah, you can just shorten words down, too. Sorry. All right, I'll stop looking. I can't find her, unfortunately. I'm st I was looking through my list and hoping that I was going to be able to find her, but... Oh, too many VTubers. Too many! Damn was only a bad word for religious connotations initially anyway. That's true! Yeah, because it was like damning you to hell. Muda, 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 muda! Muda fricker! MF, my fluffy. Motherfucker! Um, but yeah, so all right, so that, that's basically the, the gist of what's going on with the, the lewd versus family friendly content creation stuff. I feel like people are a little bit, um, I don't know, they're just a little silly with it. They're like, they try to make it into like this, this big thing where like, if you are one or the other, then you can't interact with the other one. Um, sometimes that's true. If you're trying to make family friendly content, you probably shouldn't be fully interacting with like people who are posting full on porn on their pages, but it's not you know, like same for vice versa. Technically, if you have porn on your pages, you probably shouldn't be interacting with people who have a, a mainline community of 10 year olds. But it, besides that, like most people just, exist somewhere on the line and aren't really like full-on massively in one direction or the other 
And it's so silly that this discussion just keeps popping up all the time. It's like, like, come on, people. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, it's, it's not a huge thing to, like, show your boobies sometimes. And it's not a huge thing to say not say the word fuck <laughs> and people make it out to be this like massive deal where they're like yeah yeah i can't believe that you you would do this sort of stuff especially on my timeline blah 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 blah, blah. i don't care <laughs> do what you want do what makes you happy do what you're proud of sexualization of specific anatomy doesn't help i think that the um I think that the most annoying thing uh, in terms of like sexualization stuff is that some people will say that if you are a VTuber, you should be okay with being sexualized. That's ridiculous to me because VTubers, even if they're using a like cartoony kind of model, they're using it to be themselves, to like put themselves on a screen and that is associated with them and who they are as a person. So if you are going against their wishes and you are sexualizing them just because you feel like, well, they're sexy and I can do that, it's like, it's really rude. <laughs> it's just really, really rude. But besides that, yeah. Also, I feel like it's important to disclose your age as a VTuber, even if you say that you're 18 plus. Uh, even if all you say is you're 18 plus. Looting underage characters is a big no. I agree, but also disagree with that. Um, people have gotten really uh, liberal with their information online. And I think that it's gotten to the point where it's kind of dangerous. Um... Especially because we've seen that there's lots of people who specifically target younger people online. If they find out that someone is younger, and if that person decides to post, like, pictures of themselves somewhere at some point, or if they uh, decide to do a model that's, like, in a swimsuit or something like that, and people know that they're younger, it's, uh... <laughs> it can get kind of creepy. <laughs> Yeah, the risk of letting people know you're a minor is really, it's really high. And so it's like, it's rough because you don't want to interact with someone who is a minor if you are one of those looter people, but you have to kind of like trust and pray that your community is being honest about their age and that they are not trying to interact with you if they are young like that. But that's not always going to be the case because some kids are going to hide their age because they do want to see the porn and shit and... It's just, it's, there's no fixing it, really. Um, but it's just dangerous to put your exact age out there along with, like, because there's, there's pages that people will put out there that are like, this is my exact age, this is the country that I live in, these are my specific um, triggers that make me, like, fall into a panic if I hear about them. <laughs> and you put out those like huge lists of your information to the world and people use it against you in whatever way they feel like. <laughs> Might agree is re looting underage characters. That's a hard pass for me. But plus one agree with cozy re security safety of the streamer. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's a uh, it's hard to deal with cuz you know you want to be safe, but I think that the, the best way to kind of deal with it is maybe picking an age that's not your true age, but is close enough or is at least over or under the the boundary. Uh, so like if you are a minor VTuber, maybe instead of saying, I am 14 years old, say something like, I am... Uh, I'm 16 and a half or something. So it's still young. Um, but it's not your exact age. So you don't have to worry about people knowing. And trying to use that to find you. And do things against you. I think that's the same with like 
older VTubers too, but I think most older VTubers can just say I'm over 18 and they're good. <laughs> Whereas minors, it feels like there's more pressure on minors to give it an exact age, weirdly. I never used to say my exact age when I was younger. I was always told you shouldn't tell people how old you are. Age, sex, location. Do not tell people age, sex, location is what I was told when I was younger. Now people just give that stuff freely. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind that a lot of YouTubers don't necessarily want to disclose any real life info. Some just want their characters during stream. They want to be their characters during stream, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Older VTubers be like, I'm 5,000 years old. <laughs> I'm 21 forever. And you can't tell me otherwise, goddammit. Can't stop me. <laughs> I can imagine certain VTubers who are like, 30 being difficult, uh, being, being difficult who they interact. Oh, like, like if they're 30 years old, then it's, it's really hard to, um, deal with, like, who you would interact with safely. Is that what you mean? Like, who, who they would, like, talk to safely if you say that you're 30? It can be kind of tough, I'm sure. There's, like, there's also a lot of young, younger people in the community in general for VTubing. Like, there's a lot of people who are, who are... Anywhere between, I think, 16 to, like, 23-ish within that range. There's a lot of people in that range. And then there's, like, like <laughs> there's a very few, uh, there's a small percentage of the community sitting over there, like, 30 plus. Or, like, there was one VTuber that I saw that got really big on TikTok at one point who was big in the, the VR chat space who was 40, which was honestly like kind of encouraging <laughs> for like people who are older. Like if, if technically, if mom Paka did want to be a VTuber someday, there's somebody who is old, <laughs> older, definitely older than me, who uh, made it work and did really really well they got like 800,000 people on tiktok i think they were i think they were around 100k on um on youtube yeah i'm 30 plus and if i get uh, now, if i get the sense that someone i'm interacting with is kid to teenager i'm treating them like hello i'm your mom no shenanigans here yeah 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 i see a lot of that too pretty sure the 30 plus vtuber age group is bigger than people realize it is bigger than people realize there's always like there's there would always be like a post uh every five-ish months or so of people being like i feel so alone in this community where's all my 30 plus vtuber friends and then there's like hundreds of of messages under those posts <laughs> Is it weird you guys have a VTuber starts out as a 30 year old? No, the, the VTuber that I was talking about that was 40 started out as 40. So I think you could start out at any age. I think you could start any kind of content creation at any age. I think it's just content creation typically leans younger because it is like a, it's kind of a, a popular space and it's a space that is full of a, a lot of trends. Trend hopping is big, trends and memes. Grandpa VTuber. I want a grand. I want a full ass grandpa VTuber, just like a a comfy grandpa to come and hang out with. Technically, uh, Vesper fills that spot, <laughs> but I don't think he's a real grandpa. You know, I want a real like sixty to seven year old grandpa to be a VTuber. Mm. <laughs> that makes me feel about her about not starting content creation at twenty five. Yeah, that VTuber. That like that was my main thing that um, I was concerned about because I'm not super young, right? I'm not... <sighs> There's some content creators who are <laughs> much younger than me and making way more money than I am, right? Um, but seeing that somebody started out in their, in their 40s and got to the point where they had a pretty consistent popular following was like really encouraging because it means that it's not age that's doing it it means that it is all about the content itself and like being a good creator rather than being a young creator <laughs> marine marine <laughs> 
old lady. <laughs> old boss, <-a. laughs> Uh, Grandpire. <laughs> Uh, war story, war storytelling, Grandpa. That would actually be cool. Telling about the time he faced out about, faced off a bear one time when he was camping, Grandpa. Dude, that'd be that'd be sick. Sheesh. Also, Marine is a good example. Can I talk about since we were talking about lewd versus family friendly? Can we talk about the fact that Hall Alive members, or like not Hall Alive members, Hall Alive fans, seem to have this weird preconception that their idols could never be lewd and they are wholesome and family friendly and perfect and then you look at maureen who just posted like borderline porn in a music video recently <laughs> like whole alive is not they don't try to avoid lewd stuff right Hall Alive is idol culture, that's why they're all like that. But they're not all like that. There's a lot of people in Hall Alive that are on the looter end and who say looter things. They just like assume that because they're in Hall Alive, <laughs> they're not that lewd. They're not as bad as V Shoujo. V Shoujo has never posted on like any non porn site. They've never posted anything that's like a soup, like the same style, the same level of. There was BDSM, like she was tied up in rope in that music video. <laughs> Hall Alive doesn't try to avoid lewd, but they're not needy Santa. Yes, I think that um, there was an interesting shift between Hall Alive and Niji Sanji um, that was easy to tell when they came out with their last uh, generations of people. When they came out with Hollow Stars EN and the most recent Niji Sanji EN group, there was a clear difference between them because there were things like um, like Magni talking about, uh, I think he was talking about Gundams on Twitter and um, Axel was talking about food and Vesper was talking about how old he is. <laughs> Whereas Niji Sanji was all calling each other bottoms and, and tops and um, trying to get into each other's pants. And that was the big difference that you could see immediately just from seeing them on Twitter and interacting with each other. So there is a difference, but Hall Alive isn't like immune to doing any kind of porn stuff. <laughs> they can't go full lewd because company is an ad revenue. True, but neither can Niji Sanji. So they're both towing the line. Niji Sanji just has more people that are towing the line, I think. That's not borderline. I'm looking at Marine's video now. That's literal softcore. I know! <laughs> I said that to Mom Paka though, and she was like, I've seen worse. That's not porn. <laughs> different vibes for different audiences, exactly. I only really watch Amelia and Gura, so I don't have uh don't see much lewdness from Hall Alive. True! True. I think the most popular well, the most popular EN creators in Hall Alive aren't really lewd. I don't know how many EN creators in uh Hall Alive actually are lewd. Like full on. I don't think any of them are, are they? The Ian ones, at least? I don't know. Loving the Hollow Stars vibe, but I can respect the chaotic energy of the new Niji Ian wave. <laughs> they are very chaotic. <laughs> it's true. Very true, very true. Meant to be alluring, yeah. Overtly sexual, yeah. That is true. That That is... <laughs> It is probably the sexiest music video I've ever seen on YouTube, and I'm surprised that it is not age-restricted. At least it wasn't the last time I checked. Is it age-restricted now? I wouldn't be surprised if they if they ended up going for it eventually. <laughs> it's very... You know... <laughs> over the top. <laughs> that thing. I think in some sense, starting when you're older, it really helps when you have that strong sense of self and understanding your personal workflow. True! Yeah, it helps to understand yourself when you're doing content creation in general because it under you can understand like who you are and what you want and where you want to go with it and um, you think harder about things like contracts and sponsorships and you're thinking more about uh, the long-term direction of content. I think that a lot of younger content creators tend to think in the here and now and don't really think about like the future and how it's gonna go later down the line if they do certain things. 
there's a lot of stuff to age and content creation, which is interesting, but it's just nice to know that it doesn't really matter if you're lewd, it doesn't really matter if you are young, it doesn't really matter what you're doing and who you are, you can get into it and you can succeed with it. But it is very rare. It's good. The one thing that I'll say about content creation in general is that it's always good to have tempered expectations. So it's good to never think that you're going to make it to the top if you do certain things or if you are a certain way or if you discuss certain topics. It, just be humble and, um, you know, try and, try and just make stuff work how you want. Do stuff because you're passionate, not because you might make money from it. <laughs> Anyway, I think that that's all that I can really talk about with uh, lewd versus say so stuff unless people have um, Questions comments anything to add to it all I talked about most of harassment stuff um, What say so is and why I don't really use it that much. I tend to use more uh, family friendly or other terms instead nowadays um, Let's see the different reasons why people fight. Say so. I missed the first half of this. What is the difference between the two? So, um, say so. Technically, people say so. <laughs> Technically, people use say so as um, a way to say someone who is wholesome and um, uh, like not like the opposite of of sexy and um, lewd and uh, cussing all the time and stuff like that, but it's not really correct because uh, the first time that it was used most prevalently in English speaking spaces was a parody, where a suggestive VTuber who <laughs> makes a lot of sex jokes and cusses all the time and does silly stuff like that. Uh, was singing about how say so she was. So it's kind of, it's used in an ironic sense, it's used in a more serious sense, and people just use it to mean wholesome, which can be confusing when they say that they're lewd, but also say so. <laughs> so I tend to just use family friendly instead, which is, you know, pure, clean, um, no sexy stuff, no, uh, n no cussing, stuff like that. Versus lewd, which is, you know, overtly sexual and cusses all the time, usually. Um, I think that cussing tends to go hand in hand with it, but they're, actually, lewd doesn't necessarily mean that you have to cuss. It can also just be, you know, being sexy. Um, but they tend to come hand in hand when people talk about it. <laughs> Say so lewd diagram chart for Kawa, oh gosh. <laughs> My only thought here, all types of content are valid, there's a place for all of it, but accepting that there's shades of grey between the polar opposites is essential for the community to do. Yeah, I think um, it's really important for the community to just accept that people can make whatever content they're happy with and what makes them uh, like enjoy their time as a content creator most. If they like doing lewd stuff, if they like um, putting out sexy content, if it makes them feel good, then that's fine. But if they prefer to try and make a space that is safe for minors to be in and they prefer to not cuss and talk about any adult themes or anything that is sexual, then that's also fine. And I think that it's not, it's not so important to even like make those sides interact. Some people feel like those sides should interact more and it, it's strange that they don't talk to each other more often, but I feel like if you're trying to create a community that is one or the other, it's hard to speak to the other side. If you're trying to be 100% locked into that community, sometimes it's hard to interact with the other side, but you don't have to. You could just like exist on your own and uh, do your own thing and chill. They just love and respect one another. Exactly. And yeah, if someone's making content you don't like, guess what you should do? You should probably just turn it off. <laughs> just stop watching. <laughs> that, it's so funny to me that people try and cancel people about their content. 
because it's never gonna work. The only way that it works to deplatform someone really is, I mean, maybe putting it out there does help to spread awareness, but usually when you're spreading awareness even, some people are gonna be like, I like that. I enjoy that content or something. And then they'll <laughs> they'll start watching a person for that. So like, if you, if you feel like someone is being way, like way over a line, it doesn't even work to, tell people about it because you're just gonna have more people look at it and go oh yeah that sounds great uh just let people do what they want to do just let people exist as long as they're not being like total freaking assholes <laughs> right they tried to cancel vox over quoting a vine oh my god did they really jesus Unless you legit, yeah, unless you legitimately said something offensive without realizing it. Never apologize to people who try to cancel you. Yeah, mm-hmm. If you apologize, that just puts more eyes on it. If you did something that's le legitimately offensive and you realize that you did something wrong, uh, it's good to apologize and like, you know, actually uh, like talk about your mistakes. But otherwise, <laughs> if you apologize for something, you're just spreading it more. You're just making it more of a thing. And there's nothing to apologize for with being lewd anyway. I do find it hard to interact with content that's strictly on the family friendly side and need my freedom to swear, even though I mostly prefer not to swear. Yeah, it, yeah, that's basically, it's, it's kind of a freedom thing with me too, right? Wait, really? You're kidding me. They tried to cancel him for saying whoever threw that, your mom's a hoe? You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> Seriously? Oh my god, I hate the internet. I fucking hate the internet, man. Jesus. You heard about that, Mom Pock? I don't think I heard about that one. God. Ugh. I'm okay with loot up to a certain point. Yeah, I think uh, it's good to find your boundaries as a viewer, too. Oh, uh, 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 uh mana, um... Um, mm, how do I, hmm, <laughs> not a gardening tool, um, a, um, a, a scandalous woman. <laughs> a sex worker, yeah. It's a Chinese culture thing since Vox has like one mil on Billy Billy. It's a Chinese culture thing? Oh... So the Chinese viewers are upset about it? Huh. God. Yo mama jokes are more scandalous. More scandalous than the F word in Chinese, really? Huh. Oh, respecting your parents. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I guess that makes more sense. Still weird though. <laughs> Still strange. Ridiculously conservative. Yeah, they can be. That's fine. Anyway, but the so yeah, I Trying to cancel people for just being lewd is silly. Some people have tried before. It's kind of crazy. Um <laughs> If you don't like someone's content if you don't like their vibe just just go ahead and, and turn it off And it's it's important as a viewer I think to like think about what you are most comfortable with especially in a community because if if the streamer makes those kind of jokes and you feel uncomfortable with it, maybe it's just not the community for you. Maybe you should uh, move on to other things, you know? Good to look at yourself and not try, like, not force yourself to be in a community, even though, even if you ca like, like the content creator, if you're just uncomfy with that sort of stuff, it's better to move on and not try and pressure them into being something that they're not or doing stuff that they aren't really interested in, you know? Took it personal ex extent on behalf of the other person, but both VTubers were like, dude, chill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm a slave to my urges. <laughs> Rip. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me, I think. I don't think there's anything else to add to this discussion. The point of it all is basically just to be kind to people. Be, like, allow people to do what they think is best for them, what they're most interested in, what they care about the most, and also respect people's boundaries, both as a content creator as a, and as a viewer. If somebody says something in a stream that you're not comfy with 
and it's not offensive or anything, you're just not comfy, just ignore it, move on, go somewhere else. Um, and then if uh, you, as a VTuber, wish that you could interact with somebody, but their boundaries say, please don't, uh, because you are more on the looter side, just respect it. There's nothing to really, like, yell at them about over it. Just some people just don't really want to interact with the looter content or hell, they don't really want to act with more safer work content because it has a lot of kids in it, right? So just, you know, respect, respect people's boundaries and love everyone. <laughs> There's a VTuber I wanted to watch because her model was so good. She seemed really funny and then... Uh, but then she just became far too lewd and her audience was bad, so I didn't stick around. Yeah, th that's the kind of situation where it's like, you know, it turns out that it's not really the community that you want to be a part of or, or the stuff that you really want to interact with, and that's fine. That's totally cool, you know? You don't have to tell them. You don't have to be like, hey, I'm out of here because you did this or something. There's a lot of people, especially more recently, who are like trying to put their opinions out there on everyone's content and be like, I can't believe that you would say this thing to, I don't know, <laughs> to try and maybe get them to change it, I guess. But you should just allow people to be and do who they want. Uh, be, do who they want? Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, I... <clears throat> you can clip all of Cozy's lewd moments, but expect them all to include floppy banana assets. Oh, speaking of. <laughs> Wait, I need to, I need to. <laughs> floppy banana, floppy banana. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking headline, Co Cozy defends, insert some random horror to some group. The attack culture is toxic to everyone. Oh my gosh. It's so floppy. Look at the floppy banana. Look at it flopping around. <laughs> it's dripping. <laughs> you like my banana? <laughs> All right, I'm taking my floppy banana. I'm getting out of here. Nobody has anyone else to add, I don't think, right? I think we're all- I think we're all in agreement here. Honestly, I think everyone- Anyone who's, like, a, a decent person usually is in agreement that just, you know, people can do what the hell they want, and if they feel like being lewd, they're good, and if not, they don't have to. <laughs> I think we're all pretty much in agreement. I don't think I was expecting anyone to disagree or anything like that. I just wanted to talk about my thoughts with it all. Thanks for always being around and make me smile. I appreciate you, girl. Thank you, Starseed. That's very nice. All right, guys. Um, do we want to see if we can raid anybody? Since I got raided by Rayless. See if anybody else is online, possibly. Check it out. Um, redirect. Let's see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is it all upcoming? Or it doesn't look like anything is live, unfortunately. All right, that makes sense. Nobody is usually goes live around the time that I end up uh, finishing streams. They're either usually finishing up their streams when I'm in the middle of mine, or they just uh, they pop on afterwards. Man, <laughs> takes her floppy banana out every time they leave room. Hell yeah, I do. All right, guys. I think that that's gonna be it for me today. Anyway, I'm gonna go finish up my Splatoon model tomorrow. I'm gonna be rigging it in Live 2D and uh, yeah. We should be able to finish most of it in one stream, I think, for rigging. Um, we'll see. Uh, it depends on how much I actually, I hope that I'm gonna be able to finish all the art for it in the rest of the day. We'll see. All right, guys, bye.